what if I told you there was a great way to improve your business using a superb system? You'd probably immediately think I'm one of those internet shysters who've discovered an amazing system which can access unlimited wealth, telling you about it while sitting on a yacht that they've hired, sipping fizzy juice they've put into a Dom Perignon champagne bottle and a Ferrari, also hired for the day, sitting alongside. If these guys can make so much money from doing something which is easy that anyone can do, why are they asking you for 50 bucks to let them tell you about it? Maybe there's something fishy going on. No, this system is genuine. It's used by over 1 million companies across the world and it's actually revered by large corporations and small firms alike. It is, of course, ISO management systems and the 1 million figure is just for ISO 9001, the quality standard certified companies. There are many other ISO certifications, but more on that later. It's not a get rich quick system, but if it's applied properly and diligently, then you will reap the benefits over time. The only problem with it is that it's a seriously underused system, mainly because of all the unnecessary bureaucracy, costs and generally poor implementation, which have become associated with the certification of them. But this does not have to be the case. If done correctly, it can be, simply put, the most effective way of improving your business. If you strip away all of the rigmarole surrounding certification, and more on what that entails later, then it can be the level best way to continually improve your business from your customer's point of view. After all, this is the whole reason why these standards are constantly reviewed by large numbers of experts globally. For example, an ISO 9001 system offers the ideal way to grow confidence among your customers. It demonstrates your ability to consistently deliver on your stated customer promises. Organizations using it experience vastly improved internal processes. Implementation of it leads to a well-defined and documented set of procedures. Inefficient processes are eradicated and mechanisms are put in place to deal with problems. Over time, fewer mistakes are made and consistency is greatly improved. As a business, you undertake continuous assessment and improvement. It helps you to improve the quality of service you provide. Your organisation will incur fewer complaints and generate greater customer satisfaction. It will grow your business by boosting customer loyalty, thereby generating repeat business and recommendations. So definitely not a get rich quick system, but undoubtedly something which you can implement in your business, which will make a real and tangible difference. Running a business along ISO management system lines means you're looking for improvement by involving a whole range of stakeholders from every employee to your clients, customers, suppliers, and any other key person or group that you've identified. You're always after their views. You're always gathering market information. You're a very switched on company. You marshal your resources in a way that makes you able to look for improvement and innovation at every level. Before we go on, we need to address some elephants in the room. There is much confusion over what ISO is and indeed what it isn't. So it's a good idea to frame everything against what ISO standards are and how they have been developed. ISOs are a shorthand for standards which are administered by the International Organization for Standardization. Now, because International Organization for Standardization would have different acronyms in different languages, so IOS in English, ION in French, it decided to give itself the short form ISO or ISO, which is derived from the Greek ISOS, meaning equal. So whatever the country, whatever the language, the short form of the name is always ISO or ISO. Headquartered in Geneva in Switzerland and founded in 1947, it's more like an umbrella organization whose members are standard setting organizations from 164 different countries. Members meet annually at a general assembly to discuss the strategic objectives of ISO. It has a council with a rotating membership of 20 member bodies providing guidance and governance, including setting the annual budget for the Centre or Secretariat. The Technical Management Board is responsible for more than 250 technical committees who develop the ISO standards. 
It is therefore an independent, non-governmental organisation which develops voluntary international standards using a consensus model of international experts in global management, leadership strategies and efficient and effective processes and practices. It is the world's largest developer of voluntary international standards and more than 20,000 standards have been set, covering everything from manufactured products and technology to food safety, agriculture and healthcare. The principle behind the use of these standards is to help ensure that safe, reliable and high quality products and services can be delivered by organisations who, at the same time, can increase their productivity and decrease errors and waste. They ensure that consumers and end users receive products and services to these internationally operated standards. So how are ISO standards developed? Well, an ISO standard is developed by a panel of experts within one of the technical committees. Once the need for a standard has been established, these experts meet to discuss and negotiate a draft standard. As soon as a draft has been developed, it is shared with ISO's members who are asked to comment and vote on it. If a consensus is reached, the draft becomes an ISO standard. If not, it goes back to the technical committee for further edits. ISO standards respond to a need in the market. ISO does not decide when to develop a new standard, but responds to a request from an industry or other stakeholders such as consumer groups. Typically, an industry sector or group communicates the need for a standard to its national member, who then contacts ISO. ISO standards are based on global expert opinion. Groups of experts from all over the world form these technical committees. These experts negotiate all aspects of the standard, including its scope, key definitions and, obviously, its content. It's important to remember that ISO standards are developed through a multi-stakeholder process. The technical committees are made up of experts from the relevant industry, but also from consumer associations, academia, non-governmental organisations and governments themselves. They are also based on a need for consensus. Developing ISO standards is a consensus-based approach and comments from all stakeholders are taken into account. So what is the whole ISO certification or ISO accreditation thing? Well, first things first, let's get some jargon out of the way. When it comes to ISO, the words certification and accreditation seem to be used interchangeably, but there is actually a difference. Certification represents a written assurance by a third party of the conformity of a product, process or service to specified requirements. Now, specified requirements could be, for example, the ISO 9001 standard. Accreditation, on the other hand, is a type of certification in that the third party doing the certifying has been accredited by a suitable body. In our world, this would mean that a certification body has been accredited by the UKAS or UCAS, which is the United Kingdom Accreditation Service. So if you've been certified by a UCAS approved certification body for the ISO standard that you've chosen, you have gained accredited certification. So where do these certification bodies come in? Well, when you install a management system in your business and it's been operating for say at least three months, then you can, and please note that you do not have to, get it certified. A certification body will audit you, for example, they will check that you, as a business, comply with the requirements of the standard or standards that you're implementing. If you pass this audit, then you will be awarded certification. So referring to the previous, if your certification body is accredited, then you will be awarded accredited certification. Some certification bodies specialise in certain industries, some have international reputations and some are more competitively priced than others. There are around 100 certification bodies who are accredited by UCAS and it is up to your business who you ask to assess your ISO system. All certification bodies should do a similar job, however, as with anything, the type of service you get can vary. The cost of a certification body are usually calculated on a day rate basis. The rate depends entirely upon the certification body which you choose. 
this is where it's useful to get quotification, uh, quotations as prices can vary anywhere between £600 and £1,200 a day. The number of days depends on the size and complexity of your company and it's also important to take into account something called the certification cycle which we'll come to in a moment. But to get your initial certification as well as the size and complexity of your organisation there is one consideration of how many standards you are asking them to audit. One standard could be as few as two days and then would increase to three days for two standards and then four days for three standards and so on. So coming back to the certification cycle, ISO certification is not a single event but rather an ongoing process that ensures your business complies with the requirements of its chosen standard. The certification cycle is a three-year program which starts with a stage one audit. Your auditor investigates whether or not you've successfully managed to comply with the proposed scope and the targets that you've set for your own company. While this may show up some weaknesses and areas for improvement, this process is designed to be constructive, preparing you for the stage two audit. Typically around 30 days later, you will then have a stage two audit. This confirms that your processes and systems are free from non-conformities. Again, your auditor will evaluate your performance and efficiency and make the recommendations for certification. There may still be need to address non-conformities following this audit, but it's at this point you get your ISO certification. The following two years will see annual surveillance audits by the certification body. During these, all the elements covered in this stage to audit are reassessed with a view to ensuring that all the original systems and processes are operating as specified and producing the correct outcomes. Following these two years of surveillance audits, you will then get a recertification audit. Your ISO certificate is valid for three years after its initial issue. Recertification requires you to undergo an audit similar to the initial auditing process, but without the need for a stage one audit. So it's important to realize that each one of these annual events incurs a cost with a certification body, and usually on a day rate basis. Whilst we're on the subject of cost, due to the nature of ISOs, it can be difficult to work out whether it's cost effective. Many of the costs fall into the it depends category. So it depends on your company size, sector, risks, for, for example, and the benefits will depend on many things. So they can only really be estimated. Is ISO worth it might be one of those million dollar questions, but in reality, it's more of a work in work out answer. The benefits that are gained will vary greatly on the ISO standard that you implement and the amount of effort that you put in into improving the management system. Some of the benefits are not as obvious as they can be harder to quantify. For example, when implementing ISO 9001, we would be looking at your processes and identifying streamlining opportunities, often reducing time and paperwork. But unless you're doing a time and motion study on all this, then it'll be hard to really ascertain the cost benefits from these improvements. But you can certainly estimate how much time and money you've saved and see the value from that perspective. The more focus you place on process improvements, the more benefit you will gain. The ISO 9001 standard is all about continuing improvement. The ISO 14001 standard, on the other hand, could be easier to justify from a money perspective, as you will need to monitor your waste and utilities usages. It is very easy to save money from utilities and also waste with this environmental standard. It's not uncommon for businesses to save at least 10% year on year through improvements and just focusing on those areas such as energy reductions. It's possibly harder to demonstrate cost benefits with the ISO 45001 standard, which is health and safety, but there are some businesses that will see the value of this more than others, especially when you analyse time off work through sickness or accidents. If you reduce accidents or sickness and improve the well-being of personnel, then this will return monetary savings. Likewise, ISO 27001 enables organisations to avoid the potentially devastating financial losses caused by data breaches. 
the global average cost of a data breach has skyrocketed to £3.13 million, which is a 6.4% increase from 2017, according to the Penomenon Institute. The standard is also designed to ensure the selection of adequate and proportionate security controls that help to protect information in line with increasingly rigid regulatory requirements such as the EU's General Data Protection Regulation GDPR and other associated laws. When you're looking at costs there's a lot to take into account such as implementation costs, employee hours costs and certification body costs. Of course if you want to be certified reiterate you don't have to be and more on this a little later. My company the Ideas Distillery spent a lot of time putting together a rough and ready spreadsheet calculator, a cost-benefit analysis tool to address the main areas of installing an ISO management system, including becoming certified. The idea is, at the end of the process, you can see the overall costs and compare these with the overall benefits in the context of both one-off and ongoing costs and benefits, and how ISOs might benefit you or not in the long term. The downloadable cost-benefit analysis tool and accompanying guides, there's one for ISO 9001, 14001, 45001, then a separate one for ISO 27001, they will quickly get you underway, allowing you to work out a good indication of how much your chosen path is going to cost. The cost-benefit analysis tool and guides can be downloaded at the link behind me. So is there another way? Well, yes, there is. Just a quick plug here, but the Ideas Distillery runs something called the Certification Threshold Service. As discussed previously, whether or not ISO certification is right for your business depends on your organisation, as it can be an expensive business due to certification body fees. Now, I am clear in my mind that implementing an ISO management system will improve the efficiency and effectiveness of your organization's processes. Management and employees will begin to notice how much easier their roles and workloads are to handle. But in my experience, smaller organizations can often be without the resources needed to become ISO certified. As a result, larger companies have a competitive advantage seen as they're more likely to be able to afford certification than marketing this achievement after the fact. In addition, since many larger organisations require that the companies they work with have certification, small companies that are unable to get certified losing, lose out on winning that business. So this is why we created the Certification Threshold Service, whereby we implement a compliant management system to the requirements of your chosen ISO standard or standards, which is audited by an independent third-party auditor that we work with that will give you a certificate of attestation which shows your conformance to the standard or standards. This means that you can hold your company at the threshold of ISO compliance until such time as you take the decision to certify via, for example, a certification body. We do this as a low-cost and even no-cost option for companies because when you become a client of the Ideas Distillery, this service and the resulting certificate is provided completely free of charge as we treat it as an annual audit. And these are things that you have to do to comply with the standards. More of this much later down the road. We can then provide a low cost remote audit every year just to ensure that you're still complying so we can continue to give you your certificate. This is the perfect solution for smaller firms who may want the benefit of a management system and a simple piece of paper to say that it has been independently audited, then can move over to your UCAS accredited certification body when they can afford it. For more information about this, again, just follow the link behind me. But enough about the world of certification. Frankly, it's a bit tedious. Now it's on to using management systems to improve your business.